In its basic sense, trauma is a psychic wound. And if you look at the nature of a wound, um, on the one hand, if it's raw and open, it really hurts. So when somebody touches that wound that you sustained a long time ago, but it hasn't healed yet, you'll react like you're just being tormented all over again. This happens in relationships all the time. On the other hand, uh, wounds scar over, and the scar tissue has certain features. It's very hard, it's rigid, so it's not flexible. So people tend to be rigid when they're traumatized. It also doesn't grow. So trauma very often stops emotional growth and development. Trauma is an emotional wound that hasn't healed yet and stops emotional growth and development. This is essential to understand. Let's say you experience a traumatic situation as a small child. For example, speaking in front of a large group. So this is you and this is a large group. And everybody started laughing at you. Now, especially as a small child, this can be very traumatic because you fear that you maybe get abandoned, that you get excluded from the group and this inflicts a lot of emotional pain. So you basically store all of that emotional pain inside of, so to speak, a box in your subconscious. And then you go through your life and you encounter a similar situation. Maybe you uh, need to make a presentation in front of uh, your co-workers and you get triggered and the same trauma reappears. But as Gabamata said, you have not matured emotionally in relation to this trauma. So it just builds on top of each other because you don't, you did not develop the tools to deal with that yet, unless you go back and resolve that. If not, it just keeps building on top of each other throughout the entire life. So in relation to this situation, you're basically still at the development and maturity level as a small child and emotional pain will keep coming up over and over again, just as explained in this next clip. What is happening with that wound over time when it's left? What happens is that it may be lie dormant for a long time and then something occurs that uh, touches it. It's when we talk about people being triggered, for example, something touches an unhooled wound inside you and you react, you've just been wounded for the first time. And certainly I can tell you that's been the case for me. For example, in my marriage relationship is that the, the unhealed wounds, you may think you've gone past them, but then something will happen that touches that wound and you react like you're being tormented all over again for the first time. And time does not automatically heal. Mm -hmm. Time maybe scars it over, time maybe makes it less available to immediate memory. But should something happen to evoke it, it's going to show up in its full painful impact mm -hmm. until you do some work to heal. Time by itself does not heal. It will feel like you are wounded all over again. And absolutely essential to understand here is that time does not heal. Always remember, nothing heals with time if you don't use the time for healing. And healing always means putting an effort and taking the right steps. Unfortunately, most people keep running away from their traumas for their entire life. And over time, they get so used to the pain and the issues that it essentially becomes part of them and they don't even realize in how much pain they are. That's something I see in my clients all the time as well. And I just want to show you an example of one of my former clients, Asia, who also thought she was fine, but really wasn't. Hi, um, so I started working with Philip and I really thought that I was over my ex. I thought that I didn't need to really work on the pain of letting go of him any longer. And I think what I quickly realized was that I had just gotten used to the pain and I had just sort of pushed it as far down as it would possibly go. And after literally working with Philip, I think once, maybe twice, I realized that there are actual tangible ways to heal um, and not just heal the pain that you feel after a breakup, but ways to tangibly heal the pain from childhood trauma um, that stops me from loving myself 
at all. And then choosing people who also don't know how to love me because I don't know how to love myself based on, you know, coping mechanisms that I used um, when I was a kid to survive. And it was just so illuminating and I feel like a completely different person and it really has only been five weeks. As you can see, if you take the right steps, resolving your emotional wounds can go relatively fast, obviously depending on the individual. If you want help with that, feel free to contact me or go through my subconscious healing mini course by clicking the link in the description. But enough of that, let's talk about trauma again. Most trauma and subconscious wounds stem from childhood. That's because as small children, we take in everything. We don't have a critical faculty developed yet that says, no, that's not true. Everything that happens is a statement about who we are. And also, many things can be very emotionally overwhelming because as small children, obviously, we don't have that much of an understanding yet what the world is or how it works. Let's listen to Gabo Mate as he explains how different wounds and trauma can be inflicted in childhood. When the children are mistreated, maltreated, abused sexually, physically, emotionally, when there's violence in the family or a parent is caught up in addiction or where there's a rancorous divorce and a lot of conflict in the home, children are just wounded, period. I think this one is pretty obvious and probably the first thing everyone thinks about when thinking about childhood wounds and childhood trauma. You probably have heard people say before, my childhood was great, I don't have any childhood wounds. Well, unfortunately that is not true. It's not just about abuse. It's not even about your parents who tried their best. Childhood wounds and trauma can be inflicted through many different ways. Let's listen to the next thing. In the same way with the human child, it has certain inherent expectations. And you can wound kids not just by maltreating them, but by not meeting those expectations. When I say expectation, I don't mean a conscious expectation. I mean a, an expectation inherent in the organism. So children need unconditional loving acceptance by multiple adult caregivers, which is how we evolved in hunter-gatherer groups and lived that way for millions and hundreds of thousands of years. Unconditional love and acceptance is absolutely crucial and probably the wounds that I see most often in my clients. And often that's not because of any ill intent by the parents, but because the parents are still wounded themselves and then they project it onto their children. This goes hand in hand with Gabamati's next point here. Children have a need not to have to work to make the relationship with the parents work. So a child, children need rest from having to struggle to make the relationship functional. So they don't have to be pretty or cute or compliant or clever or successful or any of that stuff. They just need to be and they don't have to work at getting the parents to accept them. That's an essential need of the child. When I say essential, I mean if it's not met, that'll distort child development. And I think here you maybe now see some issues or wounds that you carry from childhood. As a child, you don't have to be anything. That's what meant when we say unconditional love for the children. Parents have to love their children without any conditions, whatever conditions that may be. Whether that the child has to be compliant or successful or whatever. Of course, that does not mean children can just do anything without any rules. But it does mean that parents need to make sure that there's never any condition attached to making their children feel loved. And that can be a very hard balance. And that's how even the most well-intended parent can cause their children wounds. And with my clients, the words, I had great parents or a fantastic childhood is probably one of the most common things that I hear. And that might be true, but it does not mean that you don't have any childhood wounds. And unfortunately, more often than not, once I start working with them, they start seeing how bad their childhood really was and how many wounds were inflicted by the parent. But anyway, let's come to the next thing Gabo Mate says. The third need is really crucial and in our society it's hardly ever met, which is the child needs the freedom to experience all the emotions that nature has endowed her or him or they with. So we have certain brain circuits for anger, for love, for play, for lust, for seeking curiosity. 
All these circuits are there for a reason. We share them with other animals. We share them with bear cubs and puppies and little whales, you know, elephant. They need to develop because they're there for a reason. Evolution gave it to us. In our society, parents are often advised and taught to suppress certain emotional experiences on the part of the child. That's a wound to the child. Anger is, for example, an emotion that is suppressed in children all the time. And if a child cannot express an emotion freely or even gets punished for expressing an emotion, it will connect expressing that emotion with being unsafe and with punishment. So it will start suppressing that emotion and nothing is more toxic than suppressed emotions. So they just stay stuck inside of you and they keep building up more and more and more over time and they break out in triggers and you have anger outbursts because you have so much built up inside of you. Do you have trouble expressing certain emotions? Maybe anger, maybe sadness, maybe even joy? Let me know in the comments below. If you have issues, chances are that your parents somehow negatively reacted to you expressing this emotion in childhood. And since then you learn to suppress it because subconsciously you were afraid of the negative reaction. And again, many of these things are not necessarily the fault of the parent, but more so the fault of overall society, just as Gabo Mate says here. The conditions for healthy development are less and less available to them, not because parents don't love their kids, not because they're not trying to do their best, but because of the conditions under which parenting takes place in this society. Good, now that we understand trauma, the role childhood wounds play and how it can be triggered easily, let's get deeper into how to resolve it with this next clip. So trauma then, just to finish, is not what happened to you. So trauma is not the difficult incidents, like trauma is not the war. It's not the, in my case, the Second World War when I was born or what happened to me. Trauma is not the abuse that people experience. Trauma is not the pain that they felt. Trauma is the wound that they sustained as a result. So the trauma wasn't, for example, the sexual abuse. Trauma was the wound that the person sustained as a result of having been abused. That's the good news, Jay, because if trauma is the wound that we sustained, it can be healed at any time. Yes, it can be healed at any time. And as you have seen before with Asia, if you take the right steps, it can be resolved relatively fast. But in order to do that, the first step is to become vulnerable. And that, for example, means admitting that your parents did not everything great and that there maybe were issues in your childhood or whatever your automatic defenses are. Vulnerability is absolutely essential for growth. And for vulnerability, you got to let go of those defenses, such as being right, that you developed as a child in order to protect yourself from the pain. So that's why we talk about growing pains, because vulnerability is necessary for growth. Without vulnerability, there is no growth. In my experience, the capacity to be vulnerable comes automatically once you make the definite decision to work on yourself and to start healing. Healing is a process that keeps developing. And of course, you cannot take the last step of healing before you have even started and taken the first step. And according to Gabo Mate, the first step is to acknowledge the suffering that you have endured or that you're currently in. So I think for healing, whether for myself or people that I've hurt, there has to be acknowledgement yeah. of, the, of the suffering itself. I think that's the first essential step. And that might sound easy, but can be much, much harder than you probably think. In order to heal, you have to stop lying to yourself. You have to start acknowledging your own issues pain and struggles and you have to be very very real with yourself for me personally it took years before i was finally able to acknowledge my own deep self-hatred before i could finally let my sarcastic guard down and stop projecting my hatred to the outside and finally admit that this was something that came from inside of me but once you can finally do that for whatever it is for you you open the doors for exponential growth. Unfortunately, some people will never get there because they just feel too comfortable in their pain and suffering. And while this sounds very painful and hard, it is easy. It is very easy to keep saying, poor me, everything is bad and everything will always be bad and I will always be stuck and this is just what my life is. It is very easy to identify with the victim role 
And staying a victim means you never have to put in any work to heal. You can just stay a victim and complain about anything and everything for the rest of your life. If you feel called out right now, no worries, we've all been there. The important thing is that you start realizing this and start realizing that nothing will ever change if you don't start taking responsibility for your own healing and for your life. Nothing will ever change if you don't start putting in the necessary work. But let's listen to what Gabor Mate says about this. Some people do make themselves into victims. They kind of identify with the victim role. All this stuff happened to me and therefore I cannot do such and such or I'm keep or I'm hurt and I'll never get over it. It's possible to identify with the victim role. It's even possible to identify with the survival role. I'm a survivor. Well, no, that's not who you are. You survive, but who you are is much greater than that particular experience. And who you are is also much, always much greater than, than your suffering, you know? Yeah. And so it is possible for some people to identify with the suffering and the past to such a degree that they stop moving forward. Yes, ultimately, you also don't want to identify with the survivor role. It may be good and healthy short term, but in the long run, you want to realize that you are much more than just a survivor or, of course, a victim. And if you can do that, if you can step out of your victim role, acknowledge what happened to you and take the responsibility to heal, move forward and grow, then you want to watch this video right over there. It's an in-depth breakdown that takes you step by step from where the issues come from to how to resolve them. See you over there.